Hello Zimbabwe, welcome to Farming 263. My name is Deidrum Gaza and today we are in Norton in Clearwaters where we are going to meet a young farmer who is into poultry production. So let's go meet our farmer. Hello, hi. Hi, how are you doing? I'm all right. My name is Dave Mgaza and I'm with Farming 263. So I'd like you to introduce yourself to all of yours. I'm Tepiam Chingami. I'm a 30 year old farmer. This is where I stay. Okay. Um, yeah. So I would like you to take us through your process. Okay, before we get started, we need to start with the first process, which is uh, for biosecurity's sake. First, we need to wash our hands. Okay. So what is the importance of biosecurity, if I may ask? Uh, so biosecurity is important because there are a lot of diseases that, that spread into the chickens. So since you're coming from another place, uh, you may bring diseases from there, foreign diseases to the chickens. So we need to eliminate those diseases before you enter. Oh. So even if someone stays on the farm, as soon as they leave the farm, they need to still go through hands. this process. So okay. you first wash your hands here. After washing your hands, you, uh, you dip your feet here, oh. just slightly. Since I, I, I exited the sites, I'll do the same. And then, yeah, we can proceed. Okay. Welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to ask about the chemicals that you use for biosecurities. Mm -hmm. What are they and are they not harmful to the chickens? Uh, not at all. Uh, it's just disinfectant, just to get rid of germs and diseases. They're approved by the company that we work with, okay. so everything is above um, above board. They actually recommend we use them. They're very important to the process of of, of the things we do at the farm. Okay, so f um, for like, how do you change your water? Like, after how long? Uh, when it starts to get dirty, we have to change it. Sometimes on a daily basis, depending on how many people come through sometimes it may take a few days to change it just depends on how on the activity of people coming in and out oh, okay. yeah just that, that that's the main factor okay thank so you. after entering through there washing hands and dipping your feet you come into the next stage uh, which is the the bathroom the change room where you go in you change your clothes you take a shower and then you then enter the, uh, into the thing so this one's the ladies one and then that one's for me so you can enter through the side and then enter the side then we can meet inside oh so i'd like to ask like what's the importance of me changing through uh is this for diseases again so we leave all the foreign objects that you might have come with on your clothes the side and then you yeah. wear the things that have been washed and cleaned on the other side so the clothes that you're wearing now you're going to leave them the side and then you wear them when you're leaving those works inside never leave the site. Mm. They get washed, they get everything done the side. Yeah. Oh. So it's very important. Thank you very much. So now we have a head from our farmer and now we are going to the next stage. So see you to the other side. Hey, just go ahead. <laughs> Meet again. Yes. <laughs> and now I am ready for the action. Yes. <laughs> so where are we now going? So now we've entered the broiler uh, poultry section. Okay. okay. This is a poultry section where we do um, chickens, obviously, what as the name implies. So we're gonna go through the houses and just show you what we do here. So would, can I ask something like how old are your chickens like? Okay, so they are of different sure. ages. Uh, so the first, the first batch came in on Monday, so it would make them day six, day five today, okay. and then the second group one came in on Tuesday, that would make it day four, and the last group came in on Wednesday, which would make it day three. Okay, so before you tell me more about your chickens, mm -hmm. I would like to know who you are okay. and what motivated you to start this business. All right, my name is Tapio Mchingami. I'm 30 years old, born 11 April 1994. Uh, I, I was I grew up in South Africa. I did some of my schooling here, and then I moved to South Africa, and then also did my university. I, I got a bachelor's degree in economics at the University of Monash, and um, I moved back to Zim in 2017. 
so I've been I've been doing chicken since 2017 to 2024, but our, fa our family's been in the business since 2002. Wow, that's yeah. a long time. Yeah, that's very a long, long time, time now. Time. Okay, so what motivated you to join your parents in this business of poultry? Because I know young farmers like chicken, mm. legs, kind of. So, so on holidays we used to come back uh, to visit, to visit mama and I just enjoyed the work that she was doing. I thought it was exciting just dealing with chickens, dealing with cows, dealing with cattle. I thought it was very, it's different from being in the office all day because I didn't like being in the office as much. So I thought maybe I, I, I would enjoy this more. It's, I've got more free time. I love being in the, op uh, in the farming area. It's, it, it, you know, it's, it's quite exciting. So yeah. I think uh, I fell in love with farming, especially the chickens, so I'm happy. Okay, so I think me and the viewers now know a lot about you and we now know the kind of person that we're talking to. Mm -hmm. So I would like you to take us through uh, your chicken, poultry, mm -hmm. housing mm -hmm. and also like the numbers that you have. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we have 10 houses. Uh, we've got six long ones, which is 100 by 9 meters, and then we've got the smaller ones that is 100 by uh, that is seven by 70, 9 by 70 meters long. So we have uh, four small ones, and we've got six large ones. In total, our capacity is 120,000, but at the moment we only have about 81,000 wow. at the moment, mm -hmm. but we can go up to much as 120,000. So uh, uh, the type of houses we have are like open-sided. Nowadays they've got environmentally controlled houses, but we don't need it because the weather in Zimbabwe is very good. Yeah, but in places where like South Africa where it's cold or overseas where it's much colder, they have environmentally controlled houses where they control everything. Uh, the reason why though, uh, the open side it's because of ventilation. Ventilation is very very important to the chicks uh, as they're growing. It's very it's, it's very important. It's imperative that they have ventilation. So that's why the the houses you, you're gonna see as we enter are open in the sides. Okay, so I would like to ask you said you have smaller ones and bigger ones. So what's the process of those? I, It just happened like that. Uh, oh. There's nothing uh, Special about it or anything. It's just that these ones were the first ones that were built and then as we extended we we use the these four ones now, the smaller ones there, but they not for any specific reason. Okay. So the larger ones take about fifteen thousand, and then the smaller ones take seven thousand each. That's yeah. a quite huge number. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> uh, so I just realized that you're talking about large numbers. Mm -hmm. That's one hundred twenty thousand chicks. Mm -hmm. So after they have gone and they are now ready for market, where do you sell your chicken? Okay. So about ninety percent of our birds go. Uh, to our contract. We, we, we're under contract with a company called Brand Agro Sable. Uh, they're the ones who supply us with the chicks and the feed and everything that we need. And then when the chicks are come of age, then we take them back there. So they take about 90% of the birds and then the, the difference we stay in, we sell to the market as live birds. Like people just come buy them and then some people for personal use, some people resell them. But most of the birds go back to Brand Agro where they will then slaughter them, package them, then take them to Simbisa Brands. Oh, that's and, really quite And OK Market and all those other companies, you know. What are the benefits of you being a contract farmer? Uh, there are many benefits. Uh, the first benefit is that the supplies to chicks Earlier, a few years ago, there was actually a problem with supply of chicks in Zimbabwe. But when there was a problem, we, we were able to get our chicks on time when we needed them. Other people struggled, we weren't under contract. We also get feed when we needed it and when we want it. They supply us with feed. Uh, we get the support structure. They help us with, uh, with technical advisors who come and help us just to make sure everything's going according to plan. So that, that help is very important to us. And then the major, major thing is we're able to find a market for them. We don't have to worry about a market. They just worry about everything else. We just grow, focus on growing the chickens and then they're the ones who sell them. So that's the main, main, prob uh, main factor that all say is an advantage of having a contract. Okay, so to those who feel like they want to join contract farming, what are the requirements that you have to have? Okay, so now with the company that we're currently with, um, you can have as little as 2,000 chickens or as much as 120,000 chickens. Uh, if you have the space, they just want to see uh, a site where you obviously, where you be keeping the chickens. They want to see good biosecurity, bi make sure you fence. They want to see that you have electricity or like solar. Some, uh, they want to see you have a water source. That's very important. And then also they will need um, some form of guarantee, either like your title deeds, just to make sure they can 
yeah. they can work with you. So those are the, some of the things that they want because they'll be obviously giving you checks at a very uh, almost like um, on zero deposit. Mm -hmm. So they'll give you checks, they'll give you feed. So they just need that guarantee that you'll be able um, to take back the checks without any without any problems. So those are the main things that what they want to see. You go through a training um, a training period where you you train to see. A, learning how to take care of the chicks until they become until they get to day 35 so those are the things that you t mainly they, they look at oh, so i've heard a lot about contract farming mm. and now i think our viewers now want to see what you have in your house yeah uh, you come through and check it out okay thank you so to be normal so before you enter again you dip your feet again by security to avoid transferring of diseases again okay. we take biosecurity very seriously yeah I mm -hmm. see that. <laughs> so now we are in the chicken house and we are going to be taken through the process of how they are kept uh, before they are being sold. So we are going to be taken through the process. All right. So the first thing we do before we, before anything, the houses are cleaned thoroughly to make sure um, all the previous dirt from the infections from the other batch don't make it to the this batch. So the first thing that they do is they set up, um, you see this here. You've got um, what we call bedding, right? Mm -hmm. So some people use shavings, some people use um, wheat straw, but here we use shavings, right? Yeah, these ones are called chick fawns, right? Um, when the chicks are little, we, this is what we use, but as the chicks grow older and we turn into chickens, we remove them. And then you also have chick trays, these trays here. They also for the chickens as they, as they grow. When they get a bit older, we remove them as well. This plastic, this black plastic, we put feed on it, as you can see. But as also they grow, we remove it. I think in the first seven days, they remove it. And then these, these ones are called tubular feeders. So tubular feeders uh, use this to adjust. As the chickens are growing older and older, um, they adjust according to their size. Because um, as they grow, they need to they change their height. It helps the chickens grow as you change the height and then those we also adjust those those are belt drinkers okay yeah so that's what we have in terms of equipment oh then we also have for a heating system we use those ones those are just drums we call them powder we put charcoal in them so that's what we use for for heating so i want to take you back to the process where we, where we are starting to receive our chickens mm -hmm. in the house so you talked about um you use these uh shavings and others use so uh, uh, straws which so shows, what's yeah. the difference or is they know for we we prefer shavings they've got better retention and last time we saw that the shavings um the chickens get uh pricked with the with the wheat straws mm -hmm. so we saw that the shavings are much better even for retention of uh, waste and stuff we saw that the shavings are a bit better oh, so but some people prefer wheat straw so uh after you change those shavings after how long when they change? uh so like when there's when like for example like let's say this water spills here yes. and becomes wet they will take that out and they'll put more uh fresher ones because the chicken you know these chickens are very sensitive yeah, yeah. so they wouldn't they don't want any mess or whatever Okay. <laughs> okay, so now we are going to this uh, the feeding system. Yeah. Uh, we, well, you talked about height adjustment uh, mm. in different growth processes. Mm. What's the benefits of that? Uh, like I think you mentioned earlier, that the chickens are very these broilers are very lazy. Mm -hmm. So as they older, they just need to adjust so that it helps them grow. Um, for frame, frame it, it, it benefits their frame as they're growing. So if you keep them at that size. If you keep it at this size, they won't grow as well. But as you as you adjust, you see that they'll grow better, and they'll produce a better frame. And what are the benefits of the heating system to these chicks that we have? The, uh, when they're younger, these chicks don't uh, they need heat to grow. If like if you take out the heat, you see that they'll bunch up together and they will not feed. Mm -hmm. So they need heat to actually convert the uh, the feed into 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 meat. Mm -hmm. So without the heat, it, it won't work. Then they will not grow. Okay. Yeah, so uh, the heating is very important. Okay, so we are going to our drinking system. I have seen some use the nipple system and yeah. you trust the bell system. Yeah. The so the bell system is, is quite old. Uh, we haven't upgraded yet. Uh, the nipple system is the newer is the newer okay. is the new equipment. It's okay. it's it's good. That's what they prefer. 
So eventually we're gonna move into the nipple system, but for now we have the belt drinkers, but it's an old, it's an old system. Yeah. So um, before we go any further, yeah. I wanted to ask about, you mentioned about the requirements of contract farming and yeah. you mentioned about water. Mm. So I want to ask, uh, where, where do you get your water from? So here we have bowls. Uh, we have water, so we put the, we have got bowls, at, um, the bowl water goes straight into the tanks and then from the tanks they go straight into the house. Oh, yeah, okay. so water is very important. These chickens, they require a lot of water. Oh, okay. So yeah, water is very, very, very important. So how old are these chicks? Uh, in this house, when the first house is they're on day five. They came in on Monday, today is Saturday, so they're on day five. And yeah. What's the capacity that we have right now? Here, you, here is, this house can take up to 15,000. Um, but I think right now there's about 10,000, if I'm not mistaken, in this house at the moment. But they can it can take up to it can take up to fifteen thousand birds. I'm seeing a thermometer here. What's the use of? The oh yeah, this is very important actually. Yeah. So this obviously for the heating system. Uh, this is to monitor the temperatures of the of the birds. So the guys will be going to the house to see what temperature it should be on, and then as as the chickens are um, as throughout the night, they might add more charcoal so it burns so that the the temperature goes up. During the day, since it's warm, you don't need as much charcoal because it's quite hot but at night it gets cold it gets chilly you need to add more charcoal into the into the furnace into the into the drums so that the temperature increases so yeah this is very important too because you don't want to burn the chickens you don't want the chickens to be cold so this is very very important so before we move on from our thermometer i would like to know i think of yours would like to also know like what's the temperature that we use do we use the same temperature as they grow or you change okay so currently where the birds are the stage they are we want to maintain 30 degrees but as they get older we reduce the temperature because the chickens are able to produce their own heat so then it just keeps going down and down until you, you don't even need the you don't even need the heat anymore okay while it's still on heat i've seen that we have this uh the, this kind the ceiling of yeah so what's the importance of so the ceiling is important because it helps trap the heat that's generated here. Yeah, so we don't the heat to escape, and at the same time you don't want the external heat from outside from the from the roof to come into the into the into the into the site into the into the house. Okay. So it's just to trap the heat to make sure the temperatures are good. So yeah. So we have talked about the roofing, and I heard you talking about open sided, mm -hmm. but I'm seeing. Uh, we have masaga on the sides. Mm. What are the use of it? So we call them curtains. The masaga. We call them curtains. The importance of it is to help with ventilation. So at different stages of uh, of the chicks growing, they may require more um, more ventilation than when they get older. You see that it would drop the it would drop all way the all way down, and then but you see right now since they're small, it's almost at the top. But the ventilation is important for the chickens to to be able to to grow. You want them to suffocate as well okay. as, they, as they're growing as well. So the ventilation is very important. Oh. Mm. Okay, so when, you're to when we're talking about heating system and you're saying you're using my drums that you call bao right? Yeah. So what is the capacity of one drum to the ratio? Of okay, so the ratio here will be one drum can accommodate up to 700 to 1,000 birds oh. at a time, yeah. That's quite huge. Yeah. And also our drinking system, uh, one bell drinker, what's uh, the capacity? It can accommodate 50, 50 chicks oh. at a time, yeah. And the type of feeding system that you're using, the tubular. The tubular. Yeah. Yeah, it's also the same, one is to 50. One yeah. is to 50. Yeah. Uh, while we're still on our feeding, Nancy, I think so I want to understand like what's your feeding scheme like for your chicks okay so the feed what we use is a four phase feed um, system luckily we've got our manager here who will explain in, in great detail okay. we're blessed that he's here you he take us through the process and then we understand better uh -huh. Mark Adini, how are you? Hello, I'm good, how are you? I'm all right. Uh, my name is Tate from Gaza, and I'm with Family 263. So before we ask you questions, I would like you to introduce yourself to our viewers. Okay, my name is Francis Mangino. I'm the broiler site manager. Yes. Okay, uh, before you tell us about the broilers, um, I think I would like to know a little bit about you. Okay. Like I mentioned earlier on, my name is Francis Mangino. I'm a holder of a diploma in agriculture. 
Uh, I did the diploma with Bindra University. I'm also a holder of a diploma in supervision and management. Oh, that's yes. quite nice. Okay, so uh, we're now on the feeding phase of the chicks. So I'd like you to take us through the processes or the feeding systems that you use. Okay. The feeding phase that we use here at Mushingami Farm, we do the four feeding phase that includes pre-starter, starter, grower, then finisher. Uh, for pre-starter, we expect each bed to consume 250 grams from day one to day nine. Then starter, we expect that each bed consumes 700 grams. That's from day 10 to day 16. Then from day 17 up to day 25 or 26, each bed consumes 850 grams of broiler grower. Then from day 26 or day 27, depending on the management of feed, uh, each broiler it consumes 1,400 grams of broiler finish. Okay. Um, I think funny, I think some have questions. Anka, but not just about the only go like starter, uh, growers, finisher. So on the pre-starter, are we just using the same the same starter feed? Yeah, Tino Ziva. Can I could see we have another kind of feed that we use. Between pre-starter and starter, there is no much difference. The only difference that we draw from the, these two types of feeds is the grain size or the particle size. Pre-starter is a bit smaller than starter, so it gives us an advantage. As the beds are starting, uh, the consumption is uh, very high. Uh, then they, are, they manage to pick up the grains easily because they are small. Uh, otherwise, uh, in terms of the nutrient content, it's more like the same starter and pre-starter. The only advantage or uh, the difference is in the grain size or the crumb size. Okay. Yes. Uh, so I want to take you. I want to take you back okay. to the water. So, uh, when they are first coming, uh, day one, okay. do they drink just the plain water or there's some kind of water that you use? Okay. When the birds arrive and uh, mostly three to five days after arrival we give them stress break because we are saying these guys they were living inside the egg there was no stress there was no noise there was no fluctuations of heat but we have transferred them from the egg environment to this uh, environment or uh, we brought them to the to the house mm. so there is the environmental change stress yes they have changed the environment so it's it comes up with a sort of like stress then the transportation from the hr to this farm they suffer the transportation stress so we give them stress pack 100 grams diluted in 200 liters of water to relieve the environmental change stress as well as the transportation stress. We also give them uh, an antibiotic. Uh, currently we are using a product called Nemovid. It's a combination of a broad spectrum of uh, antibiotics and vitamins. It also helps to, to make the beds have a good start. But as we are taking care of my chicks, there are diseases that you might incur. Uh, what are the kind of diseases that you have in your house most of the time? Okay, uh, we don't really face uh, much disease because of our biosecurity system. Yeah. By biosecurity we mean all the measures that we put in place to prevent or to keep the spread of disease. However, it's not 100% true that we, 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 we don't have a disease challenge. So some of the diseases, they are HR related, then some they, they can be, they can start once the bed are on the ground. So as the bed starts, uh, the major disease that we mainly suffer from is the yolk sac. It's a HR disease, uh, HR related disease. Okay. Yes. Okay. So once noticed, we, we just uh, make noise, then a request for antibiotics. Yes. Oh, that's really insightful. So, uh, okay, so I had here 10 houses. Yeah. How many workforce, how many employees do you use per each house? Okay. 
we have two shifts per day we have the day shift which runs from 6 a.m to 6 p.m we have the night shift that runs from 6 p.m to 6 a.m then in each house we have one houseman houseman is the guy who looks after the beds so in each house per shift we have one guy one guy during the day one guy during the night then we have two guys whom we call relievers or helpers they are just on standby in case someone gets sick uh, someone needs extra end yes so in each house we have one guy then we have the two guys whom we can assign to any of the given ten, any of the house between the ten houses to help or to relieve someone who is not feeling well oh, okay uh, i would like to take you back Pane, i yet could uh, on the since no it's what before you put my chicks inside yeah. saka how long do these chicks take kuti zikure and after growth pads nobody so how long do you take before you put another bitch inside the house okay we start harvesting this guy these beds from day 29 from day 29 uh, probably up to day 32 uh, beyond day 32 there will be mismanagement between so we expect the beds to be ready between 10 to 9 days to 32 days mm. then in our cleaning process usually takes one week then after the cleaning process we disinfect the houses from the last day of disinfection we are expected to to rest or to leave the, be the the houses without beds for two weeks we call that resting period or uh, downtime time downtime uh, whereby the houses are, are left without the chicks to break the cycle of diseases to break the cycle of pests yes so usually the resting period is three weeks one week of cleaning then two weeks of resting after the final disinfection okay uh we are talking about cleaning my using chemicals which chemicals do you use to clean my forehead okay we have different types of chemicals depending on where we are using them uh, when cleaning our houses we start with detergent detergent on detergent we use a number of of my products and we rotate them for to to stop the resistance of diseases and the pests one example is biogen biogen uh, or maxiclean those are the detergents that we use then for disinfectant we have biofarm uh, as an example we have a number of them but this is an example of the bio ingredient that we use then to 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 descale our water system or to disinfect our water system we have a different chemical that we use for the food bath we have the different chemical that we use so we have a variety of the chemicals depending on where we are using them yes Hi, it's quite hot in here, isn't it? <laughs> uh, so guys, I've learned a lot about poultry production, the mitigation systems, the feeding system. So now we are going to meet our farmer. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, how was it? I'm okay. Thank you very much for making us meet the manager. You're most welcome who managed to tell us about your poultry production, the processes that go through. Mm -hmm. uh, so besides poultry, do you have any other farming activities that you do? Yes, we've got quite a few. Obviously, poultry is our biggest one. But recently, we started cattle, so we've got a few cattle that we, 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 we purchased like recently. We only started about a month ago. We also have a few sheep. We've been in sheep for about two years, and we also have goats. Um, right now, we're in off-season. We normally do uh, maize and soya beans but since the season hasn't started so we have we haven't done that we also had uh, some cabbages that we had we sold that and currently we planted some um butternuts that are currently they're about a week a week old so yeah so that's what we have at the moment we, our greenhouse we just need to repair it but we normally put some tomatoes and some english cucumber in, in the greenhouse so wow. those are the other activities that we have that we've been doing here well, that's quite a lot of activities that you're doing as a young yeah, farmer. Keeps us busy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I've seen that you're in the like deep, deep, deep of the out of town. Actually, yeah. 
and a lot of farmers that were meeting they are always like um, better radius from mm. the town so how does that make you feel as a young farmer uh, I actually enjoy being out here I won't lie I really enjoy it I really go into town um, town is not too far from here but I do go once in a while but I don't enjoy it uh, I don't like the traffic in town. I don't like the business of town. So I like being here. It's much clearer. The, even the air is much better. I think you've, you can, yeah, you can yeah. feel that the air is much better. So I, I enjoy air. being here. It's fresh air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I enjoy being here. So my friends come over. Sometimes we just en enjoy ourselves. Sometimes there are a few places to go to here yeah, to enjoy ourselves. But yeah, town I go once in a while. Yeah, enjoy being at the farm yeah definitely uh, so what are the principles that keeps you moving as a young farmer uh most obviously the thing is perseverance in farming you get a lot of roadblocks you know there are a lot of things that that happen a lot of things that come your way a lot of hurdles so you just need to keep going hard work as well consistency waking up at a certain time going to bed at a certain time just keeping the a rig, uh, consistent timetable and obviously we're a christian family so obviously god is very important to us yeah. so those are the things that keep us going keep me going and everything well oh, that's definitely nice to mm. hear uh, so before we end the show i would like you to just give a, a word of encouragement encouragement to those who want to start uh, poultry production in farming or any other of the measured activities that you have yeah i really encourage the young people to to get involved in farming you know farming is the backbone of this economy you know Zim was once the uh, bread basket of Africa mm -hmm. so I think it would be nice to take back that title if you get more farmers to join in especially young farmers there are a lot of ventures that they can get into it just doesn't have to be poultry there's cattle there's potatoes there's even the export market people do a lot of things so I encourage a lot of farmers to to get to take part in this thing to take part in farming I think it's very important I think we need it as, a, as an economy to keep going Okay, uh, besides these uh, farming activities that you have mentioned, are you looking to expand more into farming or...? Uh, yes, well, obviously we're always looking to expand. Um, we've got another farm in Rua. Uh, it's, it's a bit bigger than this farm, but it's not as busy as this one. As this one. Yeah. So we, we want to do other projects aside. We, we're getting into tilapia farming. That's the next thing, that, that's the next step we're taking. Oh. And then we also want to get into value addition so that um, we do a lot of things by ourselves and then and take from take it from there so I think that's the, those are the things that we're going to be focusing on value addition in tilapia and tilapia farming oh that's yeah. definitely insightful and yeah really interesting we can't wait to visit you on please your please account. do come please do come <laughs> definitely yeah. oh thank you very much thank you for having us here today thank you for yeah. coming yeah really enjoyed ourselves yeah. today uh, so, do you have um, any social media handles or contacts that yeah, you can Yeah, yeah. I'm on Twitter, Tapiwa Tindai Muchingami. I'm also on Instagram uh, and YouTube. Uh, where else? What else? And Facebook. So you can find me on those on those platforms. I'm sure you put on the screen. Yeah, definitely. The, the handles. Yeah. yeah and then you can find me there. And you, I'll also be posting about activities at the farm. Oh, that's and really yeah, nice. and other things that we do as well. Okay, thank you very much. You're most welcome. Uh, so we have come to the end of our show and I hope you guys have really enjoyed so as I did enjoy and I uh, would like you all to keep on watching, subscribe to our YouTube channels, follow us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook and also on t TikTok um, so that you can get all the latest uh, videos that we are going to post. Thank you very much.